Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Skyfall, starring Daniel Craig, Judi Dench, Javier Bardem, Ray Fiennes, Naomi Harris, and Bernice Lim Marlowe, directed by Sam Mendes. Sorry I'm late, guys. I, um, didn't, uh, I was just, I don't know, it's, I've been a little behind lately, so I'll doing my best to catch up. So, I did go to theaters for this thing a couple of times thinking I was really thrilled with this movie but let's see if that still remains the case let's get into the movie James Bond returned by Daniel Craig is an istabal as he looks at a, for a hard drive and sees a wounded agent as M returned by Judy Dench tells James to leave the wounded agent behind and he goes outside and chases a hitman known as Patrice with his partner Eve played by Naomi Harris as they try to take him down and the chase sequence is starting to get very exciting the chase starts off with the crack with after they crash the cars and james and patrice on a motorcycle while eve catches up with patrice and it leads with patrice on a train as james gets on the train and uses a crane to get patrice but is not successful as Jim is shot and kept on ticking, keeps on ticking, which is amazing for James Bond in general. And Patrice shoots the connecting of the train as it disconnects. And James catches up with Patrice and have a fight on the top of the train, which will lead, lead to a bridge where he has no choice but to make an unclean shot ordered by M. To James as he falls down hard into the water and Patrice escapes as we lead to the song by Adele called Skyfall and this is the best song out of the bunch of them and that's why Adele won the Oscar for best original song as it fits well for this movie but I'll see if Billie Eilish's song works to, for the new movie but when I get there but I for the but for the now, um, the best song in the whole James Bond movie yet to date. In MI6, M is in her office, writing an obituary about James's death, and she meets with Gareth Mallory, played by Ray Fiennes, in London to talk about M's retirement planning in the next two months as she refuses to take the retirement plans. And I thought Ray Fiennes was a bad guy when I first saw the movie, thanks to both Red Dragon and Harry Potter. When M is on the way back to MI6 and there's a hacking from a mysterious villain with the message, think on your sins, as MI6 blows up and M witnesses it while James Bond is enjoying death and playing a drinking game with a scorpion in a bar. And the next day, he sees on the TV that the MI6 building blew up was an attack and I like the shots in this movie as the cinematography for this entire movie is gorgeous and Roger Deakins does a great job with this with this 1917 and Blade Runner 2049 in my opinion anyways James get breaks into M's house and confronts her that he's out of death and is reporting for duty and the scene worked very well for the acting by Judy Dench and Ju Daniel Craig James goes to Churchill's lockout for training purposes for the new MI6 and he fails the testing as it feels like he's washed up but he'll eventually grow out of it and I like the training scenes as Daniel Craig got buff in, for the movie and it shows and while in the testing room the man says Skyfall and James walks out of the building as a test and will come back later in the film and the acting is very well done in this movie especially for a James Bond film I was surprised James waits to meet M in her office with Mallory as she lies to James about passing to his tests. And after James leaves the building, M does say that she lied, which was funny to me as I was briefly laughing. Laughing, excuse me. James meets the quartermaster, aka Q, which I'll be calling him for the entire series. As the actor playing Q, I reviewed him before a while back when he was the voice of Paddington in the two live action films and I like him as the new Q and his introduction scene worked great for him in the role of Q. James goes to Shanghai China to find Patrice and follows him 
as he goes to a skyscraper in the middle of town to get a shot at an elderly Chinese businessman while he's meeting with a mysterious woman in a building across the street. And Shanghai looks beautiful, and the way it's shot is beyond gorgeous. Patrice, <clears throat> Patrice takes the shot to the elderly Chinese businessman, and after hand, James attacks and wrestles Patrice as he pushed through a broken window as James grabs his right arm and demands to know his employer as he falls to his death by accident and what it was kind of hard to see what was happening in the action scene but all we know is James won and Patrice lost and died in a falling death which was a nice looking action scene I must admit James goes to Macau, I think it's how you spell it, it's spelled like M-A-C-A-U, to attend a casino party to and gets an unexpected visitor by Eve while he was shaving with a classic razor blade. And I love the way these scenes in Macau or Macau or whatever that place is called are shot as it is so freaking gorgeous. My God, I don't know how many times I'm going to say that a day. While James is on the way to the casino, and I love the shots and the... Not just this scene, but this, but in this entire movie, as it was well made for a James Bond movie, as this is the best looking one in the series. James and Eve spy around the casino as James sees a woman from Shanghai named Severine, played by Patrice, or no, Bernice Marlowe, as she's a beautiful woman with the bodyguards as they get a drink, and this scene was gorgeously shot, and the cinematographer, Roger Deakins, has... He does incredible work in this movie I brought up in the movies here and the movies I brought up earlier as well as here. James fights off Severin's bodyguards as he leaves the casino as he uses a briefcase he got at the casino to beat up the two bodyguards as the third tries to kill James with his gun which won't fire without James's fingerprint which was amusing as he gets kidnapped to the darkness to be eaten by Komodo dragons and Eve saves his life by one of the Marty guards who almost shoots James with was a decent action scene in my opinion James arrives to Severin's boat as he enters while taking a shower with her which is a beautiful shot in my opinion M is told by Mallory that she has to meet with prime, the prime minister before an inquiry inquiry as James is working to the shadows in the next scene where he and Severin arrive on an abandoned island as he activates Q's small radio device and is tied top on a chair and as he beats Raul Silva played by Javier Bardem as he monologues about rats living and eating each other without living eating each other without food and Javier Bardem is, is a tremendous actor, as he pulled the villain off very well as here, as well as in No Country for Old Men and Pirates of the Caribbean, Don't Dead Men Tell No Tales, as he plays villains tremendously. And he was a former MI6 agent whom M betrayed by leaving him to be imprisoned and tortured of the hands of the enemy. And when he gets closer and closer to Daniel Craig, I thought, Oh my God! He's as scary as he was in No Country for Old Men, which is which he won the Oscar for, and and his performance, is, and well, not his performance, but he and James, his in relationship with James is like Batman and the Joker in The Dark Knight, where they complete each other. As this, in, this is my opinion, the best villain in a James Bond film. Silva shows James something outside as music is playing, and they pay a little game in the courtyard where they see Severin tied up as Silva puts, yeah, puts his drink on her head, so they play the game where they shoot either Severin or the cup, and James deliberately misses in the shot while Silva shoots Severin as James beats up on his bodyguards as he makes them shoot each other and a helicopter appears to capture Silva to and put him in an isolation prison back in MI6 and these scenes were powerfully acted by Javier Bardem 
and the shots are magnificent to look at. M encounters Silva in the prison as he didn't die. He didn't die, but the enemy deformed his face as it destroyed his upper jaw. Some of the, his teeth in his left left cheekbone and it forces him to wear a prosthetic and M leaves rather shaken by Selva's appearance which is disturbing but he already reminded me of Heath Ledger's The Joker in my eyes. Silva dies du no not dies. Silva does escape the same way the Joker the Joker did in the Dark Knight while M in the meeting with the Prime Minister and I've seen this before, sure. But they'll never do this again after this movie. They do it three times, with the first time being The Dark Knight, the second time being The Avengers, and this is the third film in a row where the villain planned his escape, and this is done well, but not as well as The Dark Knight, in my opinion. James goes after Silva as he's almost killed by a train, and Silva goes to the Prime Minister to kill him, and they both get on a train as James gets a on a little too late but gets on anyways where Silva is disguised as a policeman and the chase is very intense as Silva almost escapes but James finds a way as he follows Silva underground and almost catches up catches him until he blows his a hole to bring a, an abandoned train and almost kills James but James gets out rather cleverly and Silva gets to the Prime Minister and shoots security guards to get M to M and James gets there after Silva makes a shot and Tanner takes the shot for M and Mallory gets shot in the arm by Silva as he runs out while James shoots at fire extinguishers and gets M out of there and they change cars to an old school car James that James Bond has used in the past to get M out of London and back to where he grew up in, in a place called Skyfall. And the score in that moment was a spectacular time to bring up the score to the original James Bond theme song. And I love the moment as it worked very well. James and M go to Skyfall, and which was James's house from childhood. And as they get there, they find the caretaker, Kincaid, played by Albert Finney, as the place has been packed up and practiced shooting guns, which is something James is already good at, and shows M a secret hideout to sneak by the enemy in case they have to get, prepare for war, which will come up in a few minutes. Silva and his team track down James and M, and the car in his has a machine gun on it, and... I think they'll put in they'll put in the new movie based on the trailers I've seen, which is a badass move. And they fight the henchmen at, with guns as Silva appears by the helicopter, which is a spectacular way for a bond of a bond villain to appear to appear and to blow up the house. Kincaid and M get in the tunnel way to escape while we see M has been shot. And Silva approaches the house to kill him, M, excuse me, as he blows up the house and tries to kill James. And he blows up the badass car, and I seriously love that car. What the hell? James blows up the house, and Silva does end up finding M from a distance and goes after her. And James runs on the ice as Silva tells him all this running around is exhausting as he grabs the henchman's gun and and gets both himself and the henchman in the water as James makes it out and Silva gets to some church in the area and catches up with M and puts the gun in her hand for some odd reason because to free M and himself as James comes in and throws a knife on, on Silva's back and it kills him and M can't survive the wound any longer as James grabs her and dies which did break my heart the first time I saw the movie but the final battle was a kick-ass final fight between James and Silva they get to M's funeral in London and afterhand we see Eve 
as James goes in the new M's office, Mallory, and is, and we find out her last name is Moneypenny. Eve's I'm talking about. And Mallory asks James, is he ready to go back to work? And James with says, with pleasure. And the climax was very good, as some of it was heartbreaking, sure. Action-packed, as it worked so friggin' great. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 8.3 out of 10. The cinematography was absolutely freaking gorgeous as it makes me want to eventually want to go to the places they go in this movie. And Roger Deakins shoots this movie justice. Despite it's not quite as good as Casino Royale, but it's one of the better Bond films as Daniel Craig is the best Bond in the movies in my opinion. I do really like the characters and the twist that Ray finds isn't a bad guy caught me pleasantly surprised and the action scenes were a hell of a lot of fun as not only is this one of the better Bond films but it was really well made and it works so freaking great even to this day. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me and next time I will be back with Spectre and until then, the name's Bond, James Bond.